like for example this this is a this is a uh, this is a breakout and this is a brand new market maker model so Where's when the i market maker model Sorry. this one okay yeah yep so what i what i do um when i set to doing this stuff is you know i I look at the latest market maker model mm -hmm. and okay. then I go in here, not in there. I go in uh, here and I, I follow the entire thing and I draw all of the fair value gaps using, using blocks like this. Yeah. And I draw, I draw lines through the, um, the, what you call the, the order blocks and uh the the trend lines like like this and you can tell that stuff is happening on both sides of uh of lines like this um and that's and that's great i don't have to tell you that you understand the, the concept of of this but um i can do what i what i need you the, there's something i need you to show me um, I can do all this stuff until I'm blue in the face, um, all this, but yet when I get, you know, I, I still can't predict which way it's going to go. That's my problem. Something could happen on either side of the line. <clears throat> okay. Is that the main thing? Yeah. Okay. Let me check my head. Make sure it's still working. Okay, it is. All right. So, what you're doing with marking out the FEGs and everything like that is exactly what you want to be doing. Yeah. The thing, or so to speak, to look for is just like when you're looking at complete models. That you know, do the reversal, do everything like you said. Do you the I'll open up the fifteen minute because that's what you're looking at. So same chart, we can, different color, but it's the same chart. So we can get out of this uh, screen now. If if uh, yeah, I'm I mean, on my, yeah, I'm on my screen now. Okay. Um, let's see. All yeah, right, you can see the. Okay, so in the bottom left, that green box. You can hit that, and then it says stop streaming. Right. Yeah, I figured. Okay, yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, 15-minute candlesticks. That's, yeah, so the right, thing you were looking at I'm... before. We were just looking at All right. So the biggest thing that you want to look for, like I said, the reason I talk about opposite close candle support and everything like that and the fair value gaps and everything like that is to, when you have that true shift in the market, at that low, or that smart minor reversal, and the side of the curve starts to shift, that's when you're looking for certain sided things to be happening on repeat. So, if we're on the, say we got the reversal, and like I said, we're in the process of this market maker model right now. We'll probably go above this high eventually. So, we get the reversal, and we're now on the right side of the curve. So we're on buy side of the curve, in this case, because it's a buy model. The sell model on the right side will be the sell side of the curve. So when you're on the right side or buy side of the curve, what you're looking for is bullish PD arrays to be holding price. And you're okay, expecting so, bearish ones okay, to not be so, holding um, price. Okay, so like with with the model I just showed you, that being a buy model, uh, what you're saying is when I see it bull, like when I see the the model complete itself i'm supposed to be looking for uh sell activity or something like that you're looking to match the side of the curve that the model's on so i hmm so if we're okay, talking so about like, this market maker model here this potential buy model that's starting you have the uh, left side of the curve. Then you got the right side of the curve. 
Mm -hmm. You have that, like I said, the for the homework, that line in the middle. Right. Which is your reversal. Um, and that's where the side of the shift happens. Is in that middle point. Or like that vertex of the triangle. The, uh... Yeah, just just bear in mind that half the battle is identifying the market maker model because when I when I see one finish itself and then I want to predict it like a buy model when I see a buy model take place and then I want to predict it going down again like a sell which is logical sometimes that don't always happen and it wants to go up to more before it mm -hmm. yeah so so that's going to kind of mix into time frames almost the main reason i say that is like i said buy models on a smaller time frame are going to be individual candles on a larger time frame so just like how the you can see the daily candle down here is just kind of one big candle. Daily candle in the bottom right, in the bottom left here. It's just like one solid rectangle, one block. Um, what what are you pointing to? The very bottom left of my screen. I oh um, am I supposed to be looking at your screen? What's what's going on here? Yeah, I'm sharing my screen right now. Uh. Okay, um... Huh. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna click... <clears throat> yeah, that didn't help, I just hit... I just clicked on your... Um... Am I supposed to hit turn on camera? No, oh, there should oh, be. Or share your screen. Is it okay. Now? now I'm looking at your screen. So, so much better. On the, so this is the same chart on the 15 minute that we were talking about that you showed me. Yeah. It's in the process of a buy model. Yeah. So all you're going to do is put that to the test and see do you get bullish PD arrays, their value gaps, order blocks, all that good stuff, supporting price to go higher until the the spot where you think the model would be finished is hit, essentially. Okay, I'm going to write this down. So I'm testing. I'm watching out for uh, the end of the buy model for let's see bullish P okay. Uh so um okay so uh what what exactly are PD arrays or bullish PD arrays? So PDAs are known as price delivery arrays. It is yeah. essentially patterns or methods that the chart will show itself to indicate that it's going to want to go in a direction mm. or change its delivery or so. But so at the end of the model. Whether it be a buy or a sell, it's the it's the PD arrays I'm I'm looking for to to uh, terminate the model or mark the direction of a new one. Correct. You're yeah. You're just using it to see if it's still working more so, and that's it. Because the PDAs or the PD arrays are going to be in the middle. The market maker models are just going to have the liquidity spots for them to pair their orders. So how they're making everyone sell really, really low down here. And they can give it back to the people above here. See. That's what smart money is doing. They're just playing that very, very high and the very, very low of the models. 
Because remember, they're using people to get in by force and people to get out by force. <clears throat> so, um, can you uh, can you explain to me what a PDRA is? I know um, I know an order block and um, and um, and a fair value gap and a busy and a sibby, but um, what what exactly am I am I looking for? So all of those things that you said are PD arrays. It's all a family. Yeah. So there's more that I'm going to show you eventually, but those are the basic ones: order block, fair value gap, and the breakers. Okay, because what I just said at the beginning, I I thought that's what I was doing throughout. Uh, yes, but it is. So you're gonna. I'm having trouble putting my finger on where it all stops or where well, the uh, for one. where but... the where the verdict is. You mean for the model itself? I mean, um, I mean, I'm. I thought I was doing all that stuff, but I, you know, I can't. I can't predict. Um, I can't predict. You know, I I can't predict the end of a of a buy model and the start of a sell model because sometimes it'll just keep going up anyway or yeah. or vice versa and i'm i'm wrong time and time again that's okay so don't worry about if the model keeps going because the biggest thing like I said you're going to be trading is not the high and low of the model you're going to be trading the stuff in between the oh. arrays and everything like that when you can mm. find the highs and lows you have a very very good idea of where the market's trying to go yeah so you'll know that everything in between you shouldn't be taking or is going to be short-lived. So the main reason I say that is smart money, again, is pairing their orders. So they have the lows and they have the highs that they're going to use. When you have that idea of a reversal and you get, for example, in this one here that we think is happening, which admittedly it probably is, you get a very nice bullish order block here, the hold price last red candle and then you see two really energetic up candles following it good indication for an order block and you can see it holds price multiple times there so basically i'm going to be concerning myself less with the start or the end of a market maker model and rather when i see the the breakout or the or the center or the whatever it was that you just said that i'm going to take advantage of that price going up or down for as long as I can until the end of the of the model. Correct. So the biggest thing is the highs and the lows, you can think of them as almost like bus stops or like journey and destination type of deal. Uh -huh. You're starting, they're starting the journey down here for longs. All the longs are getting started down here. Where are the Where's the destination? We can say it's above this high. So just like you would on your road trip, you're going to travel you know, to that high or that low or wherever you're going. Mm. So yeah. you're using the highs and the lows to help figure out where it's trying to go to and from, but you're using the PD yeah. arrays in the middle to actually trade essentially the journey, the destination, the trip. Because remember, price can't teleport. So when it's down here, and if it wants to go back up here, it has to actually physically go there. It can't just teleport up there and be done. It has to individually take out, remember, every sell order in this case to go higher. Mm. So as it's going through all of them, it will eventually reach for that spot that it's trying to go for. Yeah. But for market maker models in general, you want to be because you can go way back. You can go way back in time. You can go like ninety days, for example. Mm -hmm. you can go back ninety days if you want to. Well, maybe not ninety days. Like this. 
you are able to, from this point on, look back and find all the Market Maker models that exist. Yeah. And like I said, don't be concerned about where it ends. Just know that it does somewhere eventually. And then it's going to yeah. give it back to the people that were chasing it. Because mm. even in something like this, you can see the these two white lines down here. Yeah. When the market hits this low here, and is also able to do this reversal here over this high, this is where someone can sell really, really high. Mm. Right? Because everyone above this high is buy to close. They're now sell to open. So this is the start of the journey, right? The journey starting yeah. here at the reversal. Where's the destination? Well, if they're short, they need to use sell side, so they need to use lows to give it back to. So who can they give it back to? Because remember, for this goes back to Pac-Man of last week, which I do kind of want to retouch on. Yeah. The only data that Pac-Man will have available is data that happened previously. It does not have data in the future. So when you see that the reversal is happening here at the terminus, they yeah. can only use the candles to its left as reference points. Because anything to its right hasn't existed yet. Mm. So you can think about Pac-Man and the board. When Pac-Man's up here, all of the dots, all of the ghosts are behind them at this low and these lows and everything like that. Because the ghosts have been chasing Pac-Man up this whole time. So when Pac-Man hits yeah. the stop losses, he's now turning all the ghosts blue. And you can see all these big fair value gaps down here. These All these bissies. Yeah. You can think of those as inefficiencies. Or the small dots on Pac-Man's board. Hmm. So all Pac-Man, just, like just like when you think about when you play the game, all you really care about are the dots that are left on the board. Because that's all you want to eat up, so you can do what? Go to the next level. Or start the new Market Maker yeah. model. Um, okay, so <clears throat> that, um, that box you drew uh, in the, right in the center there, mm -hmm. and then after that, when it goes down again, and then it comes up mm -hmm. in a U-shape for a buy model, um, um, you know, in in case in point, in my mind, watching that, I'm anticipating for it to go right back down again. But you see, all it does is it keeps going up. You mean like here? Yeah. Buy and sell and buy and sell and up and down and up and down. Only there, it doesn't go down. It just yeah, kind of goes just up here and then goes back That's up more. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't. That's 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 my problem, so, and uh, I'm predicting wrong. Not necessarily. So this we'll touch into eventually, but these are basically failed market maker models because you mm -hmm. have to price has to reverse off of some point. So like what you're seeing, like I said, is 100 percent valid. Because you're still going to yeah. see the spots, like I said, that make sense to reverse from. And you can mm -hmm. see this this move still made a it still made a pretty good down move in all honesty. Wow. So it's partially in fact of accepting being okay with being wrong, for example. Like, oh the mm -hmm. market maker model didn't do the full thing. Well that's okay. You still absolutely could have made money on this. Because if you're doing anything risk to reward style, your risk may have been say twenty points up here if you were to sell short above this high. Yeah. You can see it ran down for about 120. So that's a 1 to 6 risk to reward. So that still makes money. Mm. So you really want to let go about it's never about being right or wrong at all. Because so that's not what this maybe... is. Because there will, be, there will be patterns, the exact same ones that repeat, like the full bull market maker models that fail because of no other reason other than luck, really. So maybe at a point like that, unlike I've been doing, instead of trying to predict the next market maker model, wait for it to halfway form itself and spot the um, the breakout so that I can trade the latter side of it. 
Yeah, or something like this, even as it's on you know the right side of the curve and it keeps going up, there's mm. still this order block down here, right? You can see, I'll zoom in after the drawing, but it's one small red candle and then like fit and then like eight massive up close candles. So you can see when price comes back into that down close candle, it reacts off it again. Mm. So you'll have indications that, hey, maybe this cell model is done or this potential cell model is done and it's failing. And yeah. we're still going to be back on a buy model on a higher time frame. Mm. So it'll allow you to exit out of your trade. Because even if you got out here at the very, very top, if you sold anything up in here, you're still in profit and you're protected. So you still made money, even though you were quote unquote wrong. Yeah. Like I said, it's not about being right or wrong at all. It's about making money. So you can Fail still make mark. money on moves like this because the risk to reward is so good. You don't need mm -hmm. actually a high win percentage to do it. Failed market maker miles. That is devious. Yes, this trust me, this rabbit hole goes very, very deep. I'm just showing you completed ones so you can get an idea. Yeah. I like what a proper one looks like. Because you need to learn what proper ones look like to be able to differentiate what bad ones look like. Yeah. So I want to show you good ones first. So you can almost go on like a checklist of, oh, this is going to have this or, you know, this order block or something is supposed to support price. That's yeah. Still, that that was still true. All it did, all this was, was just a retrace to come back, and then continue. It, just, it was yeah. really just a sharp pullback to scare people, and then it keeps yeah. going long. So it's like you're gonna have rules to get yourself in and out of trades all the time. Yeah. And it's having that flexibility, never being attached to anything, will allow you to get rid of your losing trades really, really fast. Because as long as your risk to reward is good, like let's say you sold above this high here. Right, and you can see it made this really, really large down move. Yeah, you're risking, you know, say, was this forty, whatever it is, to go like four hundred points. Hmm. So, in terms of risk to reward, that's still amazing. And you're able to pair with, for example, you think a cell model swarming off of this because of you know X, Y, and Z because of Pac-Man and everything like that. So you have an idea that everything on, again, from the reversal, on the right side, you have an idea that longs, you should be very, very cautious of and probably not take them. Mm. Because you know that for reference points, you only have this low and these lows here. Because everything on the right side of the reversal doesn't exist yet. So it can't use it as a reference point if it doesn't exist. Because how could I use mm. it? It, it literally it literally wasn't there before, so it can't be used. Hmm. But if you're able to frame really, really good risk-to-reward setups, you don't need a high win percentage at all. Not even a little bit. Because even the like only... I told you last week, a 50% win ratio and a 1 to 2 makes money. 50%, 1 to 2, yeah, that's... Uh... Like, by definition, a system like a system that does that will make money. And that's not even that crazy. That um, that's what I have been doing. Uh, one 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 to two. Yeah, one to two spot. Uh, one to two stop loss to take profit ratio. Although I've been sucking at it. At letting the trade run. I've been losing. I I oh. keep I keep losing. Oh, that's fine. As long as it's hitting your stop loss and you're not moving it, that's all you need to practice. If the trade doesn't oh, work yeah. out, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Oh anymore. yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not chasing anything. I ain't okay. moving my stop loss. Good. Yes, because the last thing you want to do is develop bad habits. And I want if you, I notice them, I want them squandered immediately. But like, yeah. As long as you're just taking the, as long as you're literally taking the trade and not caring about the outcome, that's all you can ask for. I might. Leave the trade if I have to, but I'm not. But uh, I'm not. I'm not moving the the stop loss. I'm, I'm not. Uh, the yeah. lines up and down, chasing it. No. Okay, I got you. But yeah, that's all. That's all you can really ask for them. Yeah, if you can just really truly let go of being right, and this is a trap I've been in for the last three years. So I'll leave it at that. This is your lesson, but it is definitely a very very powerful thing to work on. But in terms of market maker models and everything like that, you need to remember, like I said, this thing can only look backwards and move forward. 
I, I understand not being right all the time. I understand the concept of it, but I'm, I haven't, um, lately I've been nothing but wrong. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, I'm totally, I get what you're saying. The hit rate is very, very low. That's fine. Over in due time, you will have a higher hit rate. That just comes with experience and mm. going through charts. Like I said, in order to see a bad market maker model or a failed one, I need to show you, you need to learn what good ones look like. Yeah. So in order to be able to say, get yourself out of a market maker model that is going to fail, it's a very, very good skill to have because then you can get out when you need to and usually cut the loss smaller than what it needed to be or switch your direction or anything like that as well. Yeah. So. But same thing. It's always, it's always look back. Because especially when you're looking at old data like this where you can see the model clearly completed, like there's no, it's, it's old data, right? It's not like this one where we're in the middle of it. Oh crap, I don't know. It's not like the you know the current model that you showed me earlier. It's not like we're in that because it's still mm. current. This is old. It's already finished. You can reverse engineer and dissect it because it's already done. You can yeah. look at it as much as you want and study everything. Because like I said, what you're going to have is a reversal point that smart money will use. You'll see some kind of shift down or some kind of idea that for example a place that was supposed to hold price doesn't yeah like let's say this order block here that we had on the right just completely failed and kept going lower mm -hmm. then we'd be inclined to reverse the direction on the market because this thing that was supposed to happen did it it's almost like uh it's like a computer program like if then else if you know what those kind of like if statements are yeah it's basically like one directional rules and then if not do this and it's just, it's just, this works the same way because it's literally a computer that runs this, so it has to run off of code, which means it has to run off of computer based logic. And the only way it can get people to to generate stop losses is to use old highs and lows. Yeah. So when you realize that all it can do is look backwards, you'll know that as you move forward, everything on one side of the market, so in this case you're expecting a sell model, you know that everything long you shouldn't take. Yeah. And so when you have that, for example, like a 60 bar range or anything like that getting hit, yeah. you can more often end up using that as a new spot to form the new model. There's your ticket. And then the same thing, you now, because remember, now we're looking back from this box down here. What do we really have? All we really have from here is this high and this high as well, right? Two equal highs. People are, mm -hmm. tell, people are taught to sell that as resistance, right? Or supply, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. So where's everyone's stop losses right now above this high? <laughs> Because what can it do? Remember, we're down here right now. This box down here. Yeah. You see where I'm pointing at? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so all it can do is look backwards. So what does it see? You can ask yourself. It sees this high, these fair value gaps, and then this other high here. So that's all it can mm. reference, and that's all it can go for. And that's why the market runs for that afterwards. So you know once you have that reversal point, you know that when you're on the right side of the curve, you know that, for example, you don't want to be looking at shorts anymore. You want to be looking for longs. And you can mark out all the longs that you see. Because, like, for example, I don't, I don't know if the resolution is good enough for you, but there's a fair value gap right here on this candle. And you can see the market yeah. trades into it right there and then continues higher. And then there's another yeah. fair value gap right here, and the market trades higher. There's yeah, the, I, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. So you're looking for that spot that was supposed to hold price that doesn't, and then if you compare it with a reversal as well as a look back, it becomes very, very powerful. In which, and you have a very good chance of guessing which direction the market's trying to go. And pair the reversal, 
pair the reversal with the look back. So the the reversal, yeah, like when it cuts back into it temporarily, but but uh, the look back, are you saying that I'm going to look to the left and I'm going to, you know, look to it doing that just about parallel somewhere else with where it's doing now? In a way, yes, because you need to remember, okay, so this thing for reference points, it can only use old data. Yeah, because that's where people put their stop losses. I also want you to remember what an efficient market is, meaning that it offers sell side, like how this offered all sell side down here on this move down. Yeah, it needs to offer buy side to fix it. So it offers the buy side at the same price levels. Yeah. Same thing here offers buy side on the left right here where my arrows are. Yeah. What does that have to do? Offer sell side to fix it. So this mm. sell side delivery here is to fix this buy side here. This wow. buy side here is to fix the sell side from here in the middle. So, so kind of like when I... will fix the old... Basically the new stuff will fix the old stuff. And then that new stuff becomes old. And then that has to get fixed. And it's wow. an ever and ever cycle. <laughs> Like I said, all this wow. is really just a lens. Like I said, in due time, you'll get it. But for right now, if you're just able to go through, like I said, old data, and you can just look at, you know, we, this is one picture, right, on a 30-minute, and you can see how much detail you can go into it if you really want to. So if you're able to do that, like I said, and look back and think about where, if they sold up here, who can they give it back to? Because remember, they need to use orders to get in and orders to get out so they have to do it by force so they're going to use stop losses yeah you can use the inefficiencies of the small pellets as potential targets for failed market maker models in which that you're able to make money but still be quote unquote wrong right wow because let's say because remember this is still by all means because like I said the pattern at that moment in time is going to look identical so you have to be really really willing to let go of being right or wrong because that's not what it's about. You still get a very, very good trade. Because like I said, the pattern is going to look at the same. Regardless. Like this is a 30 minute chart. So these are, this is, you know, this is a week of time right here. This is a whole five days. Yeah. <clears throat> but I can still show you the same thing on a five minute chart. The idea is still going to be the same. Being, uh, yeah, being, being right or wrong about the outcome of the market maker model. That's, I, I'm. I'm 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 cool with that. I I think I understand the concept of that. You're trying to you're trying to uh you're trying to snag it while it's while it's in the bowl. Yes. Yeah. So when you can pair all that kind of stuff together, like I said, this trade should have still made you money. Yeah. Right? went up, you know, you risk 20 points and it goes for 120. That's a 1 to 6. Like that on paper yeah. should make you money. Very, very least you shouldn't lose money off that. Yeah. So when you're able just to do that on repeat, it becomes very, very powerful. Mm. Because the risk to reward determines how many, how much, how often you need to be winning, basically. Yeah. The whole idea is when you can look at failed models like this, like I said, look at a completed model and realize what it did for the whole thing. Um. And use spots that are supposed to hold price and then, for like I said, for example, they don't. So like... We're on this move down, right? Yeah. We don't know if it's going to keep going. Right, because like I said, some models they finish, quote unquote, and then they just keep going higher, right? Like this one just kept going higher. Yeah. The way you can determine that is a spot that's supposed to hold price fails. So as this move mm. comes down here, you can see I probably can't, but there's like four, I can't zoom in, there's basically an order block here. A couple green candles and then a quick down move. Yeah. 
this order block because remember if we're going down what do we expect up close candles to support price on its way down the same way we expect down close candles to support price on its way up so when mm. the order block in this case that's supposed to hold price fails as you can see it's high gets traded through here when this fails, the thing that's supposed to hold it, you have a good idea that the market's trying to turn around. It's ba what well, it's basically a breakout, right? Mm. I'll give you the proper name eventually. Because it's called a market structure shift. But mm. um it's going to look like a breakout, yes, at some times. But if you can see a, a quote unquote, or I don't know if you want to call it like a reversal breakout, because I never did retail. But um, basically, the fact that you have this low getting swept and these lows getting swept, yeah. getting sell side liquidity, that means people are sell to close, which means yeah. more money is able to buy to open. And then you have, like I said, that shift over the yeah. order block that's supposed to hold price. And then you get this really, really big move after. Yeah, you probably have a good idea that they bought the market, or that they bought mm. this low, for example. So you can then, once you realize that, okay, they probably set a lower or higher, you can look back from there, and then go look for some reference points. In this case, you know, for value gap, for value gap, the high here, and then that high here. So basically, everything that they sell, no matter how low it you know however low it sinks whatever they have to sell they're going to have to turn around and buy at some point and vice versa the market will have to yes yeah because it needs to offer buy side to be efficient it has to do it because it because of being an efficient market yeah because remember all of this down move offered sell side all it did was offer sell side basically just a bunch of down really really fast right yeah. So you can think of it. If we go in like a larger time frame, that's going to be just kind of one big down close candle. Yeah. So, what is a, in this case, a really big SIBI need is it needs buy side. That's why it offers, it re offers buy side on those same price levels. Yeah. Like I said, you, you're, you're going to pair a lot of this together. It's never just going to be one thing. Like I said, if you have, for example, look back a SIBI, a market structure shift, and then even like a BISI here, you have a very, very good idea because you can just go off a checklist of something like that. You basically have five things that are pointing in the direction of bullish. <laughs> so even if it's a mixed bag and like you still have some bearish stuff, you have more bullish than bearish. Mm -hmm. So you can use that as an idea, okay, the market's probably going to go higher. And then mm -hmm. once you come to that conclusion, you're still going to use bullish PDAs now, PD arrays, to see if that supports price. Yeah. And then you just keep seeing, or do those support price until they don't? Because when it doesn't, it's probably going to do the exact same thing, start the reversal. Hmm. So basically, um, the, more, the more bullish PD arrays I see the more I should be um, um, buying and uh, the same thing for selling, but with bearish. Yes, but not so much ones that you see. Because remember, it's... Because you're going to get bearish PD arrays on a retrace of like a buy model for example oh yeah i i get the retrace thing right but you're gonna see bearish stuff in that retrace like look at like this right here right you can see it retrace and then broke higher yeah but you still have <laughs> bearish pd arrays on its way down mm. fair value gap order block fair value gap order block fair value gap like this is absolutely legal legal in the sense that like you could take that yeah. So I don't want you to get trapped in that sense of looking at how many there are. That's not what it yeah. is. It's not an official count. What it is 
is you're essentially going to have a general direction bullish or bearish, and then you're going to look for the PD arrays on that same side. Mm. It's like this whole um, move, how we're so, bullish. We're going so to look I'm looking at bullish for, PD arrays only and ignore the bearish so I'm ones. Looking for, I'm looking for not only uh, PD arrays going upward, but also for um, the right color candles. Uh, 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 bullish candles also. Sometimes. If you're bullish, you want to be focusing on the down close candles and all the bullish PD arrays. Yeah. Because those should send price higher. And you're going to, do, in this case, ignore the bearish ones, or at the very, very minimum, expect that the bearish ones are just retraces, and they're not going to be that whole markdown move, and they're going to be failed market maker models is really what they're going to be also. Hmm. But the idea is, when you have something like this where the spot that was supposed to support price fails, like this bullish fair value gap and all that, it fails, the market trades through it. Yeah. That's your that's first indication. That's what's the called a market turnaround. Shift. What? So that, that's what's called a market structure shift? Yeah, basically. When the stuff that you're expecting to support price fails, it's an indication that the market is turning around because those so levels... It's kind of like a so it's kind of like a breakout, but less dramatic. Mm. Possibly. Because I think of breaking out as going for, like, this high, this high here, I would consider that a breakout. Mm. But are you saying when it comes back down to here, like this low down here, that's also a breakout? Um, a breakout is a usually a pretty clear cut in a in a in a market maker model low high lower low higher high or or vice versa. Um, that is, I mean, if I looked closely enough at it, it might be a breakout, but it's not a breakout breakout. Okay. Rather, because the the uh, the price is going in the opposite direction, it's a um, well, what you call it, um, a market structure shift. Okay. Yeah. I see. You, I okay. Well, that's good. That is good. I was making sure it wasn't those things. Thirty. Yeah, because even, like I said, even something like this. Yeah. You can see the sell side of the curve, buy side of the curve, smart run reversal here, but it doesn't make it mm -hmm. to this high. It just kind of, it's here. Yeah. You consider that a failed buy model. Huh. A failed buy model, yeah. meaning, uh, meaning this, meaning the second elbow doesn't reach the height of the first one, basically. Hmm. Or does it? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, if you're assuming this is the high, it doesn't reach it. So, hmm. like, so you can pretty much call those fake ones or fault, failed, I should say. But like, so you can still make a lot of money off them. Because what you're going to yeah. realize is the market, as many times as it does, you know, just, you know, buy and sell models, it's also just going to do some retraces to other PD arrays. It's called premium to discount, which we'll probably talk about next week. Because I think it'll help show when you can expect to take longs or shorts, as well as where you could get some expected reactions off price, or where you can find, like, failed market maker models. So if I see a failed 
market maker model, then I might predict that, um, well, after that failed market maker model, after that second elbow, sure, it goes down again, but it kind of like fizzles out, mm -hmm. doesn't really, that that's the kind of thing I can, I can uh, more or less predict, right? Yeah. And that's the other thing. Do you consider this a fail sell model now? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess it would be. You see what I'm saying? And then, it's gonna, and then it's gonna, you know, it's gonna fizzle on like it's like it's doing yeah. until uh you know, until smart money decides to jerk it up and jerk it up or down again and make a whole new new model, right? Yeah. <laughs> like even this one here, you can see it's, it's you you're, like I said, for the pattern, you're going to get the exact same thing. It's not going to change. The pattern itself is not going to change. It's a pattern. Yeah. Like I said, you can still make a good amount of money off a move like this easily. Yeah. It's still, yeah, it's still went 80 per, It's still went, even if you're down here, cause think, let's apply some look back again. Underneath these lows, collect some. Remember, you can only look back and left. Yeah. So anything here doesn't exist yet. Yeah. So if you get confirmation that this is the reversal, and you can start your look back from example here, what do you really have? This fair value gap? And then you got this one up here, right? And then you have this high. Yeah. yeah. So you can think of those, like I said, as Pac-Man's small dots that he has to go get. So he goes in what? Yeah. It offers sell side, so he goes and gets the fair value gap and then gets the one up here. So, but, um, oh, no, the market maker model failed. So, we, so you had set, say um, you had set your take profit at, um, well, one tactic I've seen is when you see a big long candle like that, that marks, well, I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, that your uh, your take profit uh, or your stop loss for that matter, right? You know, right smack mm -hmm. dab in the middle of that candle. You mean your take profit? Yeah. If you're long, yeah, fifty percent of a range is really good. Like so, we'll talk about that next week now because that will, like I so said, that'll help you with um. What's known as a daily range, like I said, in premium and discount. Like I said, this mm -hmm. all this really did was go from discount to premium, which, like I said, we'll talk right. about what makes it discount and premium. But when you're able to do that and use those as targets, and then target, for example, the high in what you think might be a market maker model, you can use that as like the final take profit, but you can still use an earlier one to still make money. Mm. And then let the trade go to that if it really does, or like I said, and sometimes. The model finishes and it keeps going. You can plan for mm. that also, but it, you're still paying yourself on the move, and that's what's more important. Yeah, even though it's quote unquote wrong, because it didn't complete the model. That's stupid. Yep. You can still get yourself paid on that move. Yeah. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like you, you drove basically ninety percent of the way there. You should get you should get something for it. That type of deal. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I learned something today. I'm not looking for the end of the market maker model. I'm trying to ride it for as long as I can. Correct. And you're just using the PD arrays in the middle, order blocks, fair value gaps, all that stuff to get there. Or to ride it, I should say. And, mm -hmm. like I said, when you're looking at these old models, like I said, don't forget, you can find, go look at their true reversal spots and see and see if you can make, quote-unquote, the, the actual model itself. Can you find the high, low, or low, high, low, or low? That type of thing. Yeah. Especially when you're looking at completed ones. Because I said they completed, you know they did because it's it, it literally did. It's in front of you. So it's not like ones that yeah. are in progress like this one. You know for a fact <clears throat> that like this model fit that this model finished here, for example. Mm. Or this cell model here. So being that here. so being that the points are never going to cross exactly, um the uh 
looking at these ones here, um, a low, high, lower, low, um, like the one, um, ah, the, uh, so, um, a low, high, lower, low, uh, the, when I say a lower low, that's that means that it's a completed market maker model. Yeah. But if but if that lower low is just is uh if it's not is a, a higher low, low yeah is a is a higher low then it's not a completed market maker model. Correct. Right. But you could still absolutely make money on them. Yeah. Because especially when you, because like I said, all we're doing is we're going to trade market maker models that are large enough for us. So like huh. if we go in like a, remember, if we go in like a four hour, you can see all this selling that it did from here to here, right? Like we started here, then it kind of just kept selling, 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 selling. Yeah. This is two weeks. This is actually like three weeks. This is three weeks of data. But you can see how you're pretty much how it's in some kind of large cell model, or almost how it failed, mm. or how technically this one did complete. If you if you count this low, it technically did complete, but I'm not gonna be that guy. But realize that you're we're always if you this goes back to like the idea that the market's fractal and the whole like space infinite universe stuff. We're just mm. that tiny speck in price, right? The current market price is just that tiny, tiny speck. Tiny, tiny speck, right? We're here right now. Yeah. We're literally here where my cursor is. But you can see what we're in the middle of. So we're just in some really tiny, relevant space in relation to what the market's actually doing. So when we're in that really, really large sell model, like on a four hour, we know that our intraday stuff or anything smaller time frame than that is more likely to be a sell. Yeah, so all those all those little movements upward are the kind of things that last week uh, that we can count as fake. Yes. <clears throat> right. I'm gonna make this real fast. That's the last thing. Okay. So, what I'm about to tell you is basically some very, very old price logic. Yeah. It's basically the price delivery, and it's the order that price can move. So, price can only do basically can do four things. It can consolidate. It can expand. It can do a retrace or a retracement, whatever. Mm. And it can do a reversal. These are the only four two these are the only four things price can do. It can do one of the four. It can consolidation, expansion, retracement, or reversal. These are the only four things it can do, so they're all connected. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. That's the same. I can do four things, four things only. Correct. Ah, oh, man. This thing. Um, so, uh, oh, let's see. Console. Expand. Um, re. Let's see, console, expand, trace, and reverse. Hmm. Now. So, okay, so when it consoles is when it when it settles into Yep, a, a, cons a consolidation range, right? Yeah. You know? Expansion, exactly what you think it is. It fucking moves up or down. Yeah. 
So the really long candles, is that the idea of, of an expansion? Yes. It expands from where it's at. And when it retraces is when it, like... Does the it... pullback and then goes for the new high? Hmm. Right, it doesn't break this low. Mm-hmm. The reversal is when it breaks that low. Reversal when it breaks the low. Mm. So a reversal is like what a um a breakout or a market structure shift does, right? Yes, it's what a yes, a reversal is what a market structure shift does, technically. Hmm. Because the price technically reverses because the market shifts its direction. So that okay. part is true, but that's not like the main takeaway, I guess. But I do like that you're thinking about it already. Yeah. But that is just an example of it, yes. So, the main key thing with these four is price always, 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 100% of the time, forever in time, always starts consolidation. Mm. It can never start as an expansion. It can never start as a retracement. It can never start as a reversal, if you think about it. So it has to start as a consolidation. Yeah. Now, if you think about the other three, what is really possible to do from a consolidation standpoint? It can't really do a retrace, because what's it going to retrace off of? It's in a consolidation. It can't really reverse off something because it's a consolidation. Yeah. So what can it do? The only thing it can do is expand. It can, exactly, it can expand. So the second part is it's consolidation expansion, always. Yeah. What happens after that is where the other two come in, because it can either retrace and then you know do something else, or do a reversal off of the expansion. So you can think about this as almost like stages. Like it has to go in this cycle. Or this mm. circle, so to speak. Like this is the only four things it can do. But it has to do... It always has to go consolidation, expansion. Now what it can do, it can go, for example, consolidation, expansion, retracement. Well, what usually happens after a retracement out of these four that are possible? Um, well, these three, I should say. An expansion, right? Exactly. Like I said, there's an order to this. When you really think about it, there's not that actual many options. Because you know it always starts yeah. consolidation, expansion. It can either then do a retrace or a reversal. Makes sense. Now, where it gets very crazy, go to market maker models. What can it do? Consolidate, expansion, Validate. What happens after consolidation? Expansion. Mm. What can happen after expansion? Retracement or reversal? So it can either retrace for another expansion. Mm. And then at some point the market's going to do what? Reverse. Yeah. So after it does the reversal, what should you expect? You're down here. And you're trying to get down to here. A retrace. Because you're going to have yeah. order blocks, fair value gaps, all that good stuff. So mm. Retracement. Well, what happens after retrace? Expansion. <clears throat> and the model's done. Right at the original consolidation. Where people originally put their stop losses. You know... I don't know if that helps or hurts. But it's a very, very good it's a very, very good wheel to think and draw about and literally ponder on. Mm. You can think about that, like I said, as you look at charts. It helps. Always consolidation. Yeah. Expansion. In this case a reversal. So if it's reversing, it should retrace. To do what? Expand again. Yeah. Right? Same same thing. 
say literally the same thing. Granted, it's upside down, but it's the same thing. So when you really yeah. think about the order that this can really happen in, it becomes very, very powerful. Mm hmm So, very, very good food for thought, but when you realize that's all it can do, like I said, you apply it with some look back and everything like that, you'll have a very, very good idea of where the market's trying to go. A lot of yeah. the time. And once you have that conclusion made, you then can start testing the PDA rates and see does that happen. Like I said, yeah. what's also nice is you can look at completed models and already have the answer for you. Like I said, if we're going to look at this cell model here on buy side of the curve, right? This is happening. It's on buy side. We get the market structure shift, get the yeah. breaker here basically. Now we're going to do what? Look for bearish PDA rates. Our value gap. You see the market trades into it multiple times. Yeah. It also runs as high to be cool. This is stop out some people. Well, what if you what are you gonna stop out shorts for? To go short. Because you can force everyone to buy to close, which is gonna allow you sell to open. So you have so, that as um, well. So what's a good place to put your stop loss? Would it be like right at the peak of that uh, market structure shift? That'd be the safest spot, yes. Hmm. But for something like a breaker or other stuff I'm going to show you, you can put it at like a top of a fair value gap, for example. Hmm. Is, an is another thing, which, well, like I said, we'll dive into, but like the safest spot technically is the very, very high, the very, very low, which, if you remember, that's when we talked about, oh, where do people put their stop loss? How we had the one, two, and three, or like the one, two, three levels. Yeah. Because you were saying, oh, yeah. one, one is too close because it's probably going to get stopped out, so put ours in the middle. But then the safest okay, spot is yeah. the people up here. That's a failed sell model, by the way. But I think you already said that. Yeah, it is. So, but when you have that, you're able to dictate and get much, much tighter risk because that's all you need. Mm. Like I said, the better your risk yeah. to reward, the hit rate doesn't need to be there as much. As I said 50%, one to two makes money. Yeah. If you're trading a one to three risk reward, you only need to be right a third of the time. Mm. And I promise you, your win rate can easily hit above 70 when you put right. work for this. So what's actually required to be making money is not, not a whole lot all of a sudden. Yeah. For what you're learning in terms of methodology. So, mm -hmm. But again, back to this. You realize, you're, okay, we get the shift. We know the model finishes. So after this point on, you know, the line in the middle, the reversal, let's start looking at bearish PDA rates and see what happens. And just we just go through it and we, we just study it. You can see we get a small one here. Here value you get. Try to zoom in a bit. But... Fair value gap. Get order block here. Off this wick. Yeah. Get another one here. Another fair value gap. You can see offers sell side. Inefficiently, it's a SIBI. So it is a need. Buy side to fix it. That's how you get the buy side delivery here on the candle. And then yeah. it takes lower. So now was that an order block? Okay. <clears throat> then as you keep going, same thing. You get another order block here. Big up close candle. And then the large displacement afterwards. There's your order block. You can see it hits it multiple times. Trades lower. Mm -hmm. Fair value gap. Trades into it multiple times. Trades lower. Scroll down a bit. So you can see like when you have that initial shift. All the way up here, you're now looking to see do the bearish P to your raise support price. And you can see they pretty much do the whole time. Like, yes, this one wicks above for the time being, but you can see it closed all the way down here. So it was a very, mm -hmm. very aggressive move away. Yeah. So a pretty strong indication like the area is still defended or it's still sensitive to it. Especially, like I said, when you apply look back, it becomes extremely powerful. Extremely powerful. Like there was a reason I was a I told my friends. 
Because if you think about look back, what do you have for reference points? If you're looking back from the same place that you reverse from, all you have is this low down here as a reference point. Yeah. And you have this bullish fair value gap, but it was already dead, which I told them that as well. So if you have no inefficiencies, all Pac-Man really has is the stop losses or that low or that completed sell model. It's when he has those inefficiencies that he has to go fix is when you get the failed models. But when there's nothing and it's just stop loss to stop loss, that's when you're going to get the complete market maker models. Yeah. But what's nice is after you have that shift, you know, I have a very, very good idea that everything over here, all these longs are not going to work or they shouldn't be, like I said, they're just going to be retraces. They're not going to be full blown expansions to the upside yeah because you know because the way the way this whole thing works is it locks onto something basically and once it locks onto it it doesn't stop until it hits it it may stall like this but it never stops going for it because that's what <clears throat> it actually cares about because remember from this moment here and backwards is all you have everything on the I right noticed. side over here doesn't exist yet so you can't use it I noticed that that first buy model on the left, uh, that's that's an incomplete. Yeah, that's an incomplete. But the one after that is a complete. So to that, I will say it depends how you want to view it. Hmm. You need to remember. Cause like, I assume you're talking about this buy model here. Yeah. Right. So because the market's fractal, you're going to see buy models and buy models. You're going to have something like this still. Mm -hmm. It's just a buy model that just kept expanding higher. You could argue. Huh. Cuz it's all it's all the, it's all the same and just a time frame shift. Cuz like yeah. this cuz you could really say this is just a buy model that kept going higher, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, you're going to see within market maker models, you're going to see, like you even like you did just now, buy models inside of them. Or yeah. failed sell models inside of them. Also. Mm. Okay. But yeah, when you're able to, like I said, when you, especially when you're looking at complete models like at really, really old data, not current data, but old data where you can see models that have finished, Find that reversal spot and look left from there and assume that everything over here, it's not that it's fake. Well, it is fake. It's that you know that because you're locked onto this low down here at this circle, you know that everything on the right side, if you're in a sell model, you know that longs you probably shouldn't do. Yeah. So you're going to look. So if you know longs you shouldn't do, the only other option is shorting. You're going to see and walk through the model afterwards does the bearish PD array support price? In which case, you can we walked through it earlier. It does perfectly. Okay. So it's really about making sure you're just not because once, like I said, one side of the market you're basically going to have ruled out at all times. So like, oh, I know I shouldn't be longing. Okay, well then I should only be shorting. So you know to never even bother with longs when you're on that side of the curve or that side of the model. Yeah. But yes, you're still going to get also bullish stuff in between. But that's the trap. Mm -hmm. As you know, because you're locking onto this low, all longs are fake. And you're actually trying to go for this low down here because that's all it sees. That's all it's locked onto. And it'll go yeah. for that lock until it's hit. Yeah. Even if it moves away, it's just a fake out to just get more people on the wrong side. Yeah. That's pretty much it for now, and I'll uh, you know, good notes we, the delivery. I definitely learned. I definitely learned something today. Yeah, I'll say this one you might want to come back to in like a month. I was thinking about that. Some of these other ones you might want to also come back in like a month because they'll make more sense. Yeah. So, yeah, no, don't watch them like back to back. I mean, I guess you can, but you don't have to watch them like back to back. You're really mm -hmm. better off because, like I said, this, even some of the stuff I've told you before. 
you'll be able to connect the dots of what I was saying. And it'll be just like cool aha moment. Yeah. What um, what what's a good day uh, for you from now on? Do you know? 